Welcome to a demonstration of debugging Go code using the Zeus IDE. In this particular example, we'll be using the Delve debugger. Um, so the first thing we need to check is that Delve is actually installed in the command line. An easy way to do that is to use the tools DOS command line menu right there. And all we have to do is if we run Delve version, it'll actually check to see if Delve is installed. And sure enough, it's found the Delve debugger and announced its version number. The other thing to notice is we're running a, a beta version of Zeus. Um, earlier versions of Zeus had GDB support for Go and no Delve support. Um, but now that Delve is actually working on Windows, um, the later version is now getting support for Delve. And as we all know, the GDB debugger support is not good, whereas Delve looks like it actually is quite good. And this example, this demonstration will show some of the features of Delve working on Windows with Go code. So we now know that Delve is installed. So the first thing we need to do is actually obviously get some code to debug. So here's a simple one file Go program. And the, the plan is to debug this. So the easiest way to do it for, for one file programs, the easiest way to do this is just to start the debugger. So if we do that using the debugger start menu, let's see what happens. And it pops up this um, file open dialog box. And what it's trying to do is it's what it's saying is it's it's expecting to find a main.exe because we're debugging a main.go file. And it didn't find the exe. So it's asking you, the user, to provide the location of the executable. Now, in this particular case, the problem isn't the exe doesn't actually exist because we didn't build it. So because this machine also has Go installed, the easiest way to do that is just to run Go compile. And that by default will do a Go build on this file. So if we run that, we now, it's completed successfully. If we now check our command line, if we do a directory of the current folder for this file, we can now see we've got a main exe for our Go file. So that should mean that the debugger is happy. So if we now start the debugger, up comes the debug session. And this time it's, it's happily running the Delve debugger and we're debugging this main dot executable. This uh, control panel dialog over here lets you control different aspects of that debugger. Now in this particular case, for example, let's just run continue. If we run continue, let's see what happens. So what it's done is, as you can see, it's run through that executable. It's just executed it, and the process is, ex is exited. Okay. So naturally, what happened there is we didn't set any breakpoints. So let's go back to our main.go and set a breakpoint. So if we put a breakpoint there, we use the set button over here in the control. Now, the, the breakpoint comes in as white, and that's the reason it's white is because that breakpoint hasn't been validated. And the reason is our last debug session has actually ended. And if we hit the run button, it will reset that session. And in the process, we'll also validate our breakpoint. So if we hit run to reset the session, away we go. We have now got our new debug session. And as you can see, it's now set the breakpoint there. And it's validated that the breakpoint is valid, is correct. And over here, we now have an, an indicator that says that the breakpoint is valid. If, for example, I put a break, try to put a breakpoint on code that doesn't exist, let's say line 20 over here, if I try and set that, it fails because there are there is no code at that line, and we get the indicator showing that the breakpoint is invalid. So let's clear that one for now. And I'll also set one right here on exit because I'll show another feature later on. So let's set that breakpoint there. All right, so now if we run continue, it hits the breakpoint and it stops on our breakpoint. Now we can arrange these windows to show both sessions. So let's just do that. And right here, you can see that it's hit the breakpoint in the debugger at line 23. And it's also hit the breakpoint up there at line 23. And again, we can use our step next buttons. Um, and so let's go step, step over. Right, so it stepped over that command. Yeah, you can see that it stepped over here in the debugger to the print statement, and naturally it's also moved over here on the 
to match over there. Now, the other thing we can do is that if we can use some of the other features over here in the control panel. We can look at the locals, for example. So there are all the locals in the current scope. Arguments. Naturally, there are no arguments in this particular case, so we get no results, but we've got things like threads, the registers. Um, the other thing you can do is you can print a particular variable. So if I put go back here and I highlight, I put the cursor on the message over here, and I hit print, it prints out the value of message as it is right now. The other thing you can do is you can actually run debugger commands using this command line. Here's an example of an earlier thing where it's trying to print message 111. So if I execute that, naturally it doesn't exist. So it says the symbol value doesn't exist. But if I change it back to a correct symbol, which is print message, execute that command, there you go. So you can actually just talk to the debugger using this little command line entry field here. Okay. Um, so let's continue back, continue on to our, our next breakpoint. And there we go. We've hit our exit breakpoint. Now things get interesting because if we actually um, step into this, now what we found, we've actually now got, we've now gone into the actual Go um, source code itself. If you look at the caption at the top, you'll see you're in, we're now in the runtime component. And it gets even weirder than that because if I keep stepping in, and we'll get there shortly, um, we will actually get to the point where we actually hit the assembler code. And here we go. Here's the ASM Go code. So now, now we're down to the assembler level, and we, we're debugging at that level. So the Delph debugger definitely seems to understand Go code better than the GDB, um, and it lets you step right down to the, you know, the lowest levels of the, the Go code itself. Well, we'll just go continue to finish the session off. If we go back to our debugger, we'll see we've exited. Uh, and, that's, and the other thing is um, it remembers the breakpoint. So if I just restart this session, it will re re reapply the breakpoints. So, so it'll actually persist some of your breakpoints. It will persist all your breakpoints. Um, and you can rerun that session as many times as you like. So again, if we run continue, uh, continue, continue it's now exited again and once again we can rerun that session so you can do that as many times as you like um, it'll even remember it outside of sessions if I close the debugger down and I, and I do another start it's still remembering those breakpoints from previous from the previous session so it has a little bit of persistence there right so that that's an example of debugging a simple one one file program but what happens when you've got bigger projects? So let's let's take an example of a bigger project. Let's go to the Go Code project. Now, those who are familiar to Go will know Go Code is actually the auto completer for Go. So what happens if we wanted to say, for example, try and debug this? Well, here, here is the folder, here is one of the files that make up Go Code. Now, the easiest way to do bigger projects is to create a workspace. And there's this button here, which is the toggle navigator. If I click on that, it shows that there's no workspace currently open. There's a new macro in this new beta too, this, this new Zeus beta, which allows you to easily create Go, Go workspaces. So because I have a Go file open in the location of this Go code project, all I do is I run this macro called new Go workspace. And it pops up this message box, this user input box to say, I, I, I want to create a, go, a project called this in this location. Do you want me to do that? And if, if I go OK, it'll create a Zeus workspace and saying there's a one there already. So we'll just overwrite that. And here we go. It's now created a Go workspace. And it's basically gone through all the different directories in that at that location looking for go files um, and naturally some of them haven't some of the folders don't have go files so they're not there but but if i go to you know it's, it's basically traverse the tree looking for go files right the other the other thing that the workspace does is actually fills up this class panel so if we click on this classes panel it's actually tagged all the different 
items in that found in that go code. So that's another feature. You can then navigate that tags information using the tags menu up here. But that's another topic. So at this point, we've now got a go workspace. The other thing that the macro did was actually set up the workspace. If we actually look at the options, we can see that if we click on this project, it set up the commands to do the builds. It set up the commands to do the debuggings, and it's actually selected the Delve debugger. So basically, by running that little macro, we've now got a workspace that's set up to run, to build and to debug. So how do we do that? Um, right, so right over here, if we now go to the debug option here, we can either run the debug from here, or we can just do the debug from over here, like previously, but they're the same, same, effectively the same thing. If we try and run the debugger, sure enough, we get the same, same debug executable dialog. Now, in this particular case, it actually knows that it's got a workspace open, so it's actually looking for, you can see it's looking for a go code.executable based on the workspace name. Now, in this particular case, I don't have an executable. We've, got, we've made the same mistake. We haven't built the project. But it could be that the actual project name doesn't match the executable name, in which case what you really should do is Let's go into the workspace over here and change change this detail here. But in this particular case, that project name does match that executable name. And the only reason we're getting that dialog box is because we haven't done the build. So let's do that. Let's do a, a make on this project. Again, it'll do a go build. Now we can go back and check using our trusty command line. And this time, look for executables and sure enough there's our go code executable so now the debugger should be happy so if I start the debug we now have a debug session same again you'd, you'd put breakpoints at your um, you'd use the set option to set breakpoints and let's see what happens if we run it we're now at that breakpoint. And again, I could view that variable by using the print, and it's false. So it actually knows that it's false. So naturally, if I go step, we're doing the client side code. So here we are, we're now debugging, debugging the actual client side of Go code. And once again, it's it steps all the way into the into the bowels of Go, like here we're back down to the source net file, files. Um, so you can basically just debug it just like any other session. Okay, so that sort of gives you an overview of how the new features of the Delve debugger and how it works with the new version of Zeus. Um, one thing you should do is make sure you, if, if, we, if we run our little version number thing again, our version check, you'll notice that the version number is very early. It's an alpha version. So this is going to be changing quite rapidly. So naturally, you want to make sure you keep getting the latest version of Dell and replacing it with the version that comes with the beta, okay? Because obviously, they're going to be fixing bugs as, bugs as they get found. So you want to be using the, the, the latest. Details on how you actually build that and, and where you get it from. Um, there'll be a link at the end of this uh, uh, on, in the summary section of this video, which will show how you go about building that. And it's a fairly simple process, but that'll be found in a link um, in the summary section of, of this video. But yeah, so you'd want to be making sure you get the latest versions of the debugger because I'm sure it's going to be changing. But as you can see, it actually seems to work quite well. It understands Go code quite nicely. Um, and it's now integrated into Zeus. Thank you.